Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jesse, and today I'm kicking off a reading vlog and a bit of a reading experiment. I recently made a video talking about the books that I have DNF'd so far this year, and after making that video, I got recommended a lot of booktubers' videos where they were talking about their own DNFs, and my idea light bulb went off, and I thought it would be interesting to read booktubers' DNF'd books, and throughout the process, try to figure out why they might have ditched a certain book, also just seeing how I end up feeling about that book in particular, seeing if I feel like the booktuber gave up on a fantastic book or seeing if I feel similar and I too would like to DNF the book. The first booktuber that I've chosen for this video is none other than Jack Edwards. The man, the myth, the legend, we all know him. I'm going to scan through this video that he made back in 2022 where he talks about his DNF books from that year and pick out a book from his list. I'm not going to be fully watching his video yet, I'm just going to be scanning through it because a part of this process is that I want to try and figure out why the booktuber might have ditched this book. I'm going to do a little scan and I'll report back with the book I've chosen. I'm a little shook by the book on his list that I chose, just because I feel like this book in particular is a book that I feel like Jack would like. Me, having not even read this book, thinking that he would like it? I don't know, there's just something about it that I feel like he would like. Consider me shocked to find Pachinko on Mr. Jack Edwards' list. But I'm also really glad it's on his list because little old me has been wanting to read this book for so long and I've never been able to like carve out time for it. So the time is here, it's Pachinko time. This is my copy of the book, but you might be more familiar with this cover. Pachinko follows the different generations of a Korean family who find themselves living in Japan in the 1900s. It starts in the 1910s and goes into the 1980s, and we explore kind of that backdrop during that time. I honestly don't know too much about this complex relationship between Korea and Japan. I know that it is very complex though, and I feel like this book explores it in depth, but mostly we are following this family and their growth over time. I'm really interested to see if I can kind of pinpoint what might not have worked for Jack with this book. It's also very likely that Jack was enjoying this book when he read it, but like maybe he got distracted by another book and just set it aside and never came back to it. Obviously, a DNF does not always mean that you will never come back around to a book. Either way, I'm really excited to like finally get the chance to crack into this book and see what it's all about. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be starting this book this evening. I don't have too busy of a day. I'm just going to get my hair cut in a little bit, which my hair is like fine right now, but I know if I don't get a haircut now, I will just wait to a point where my hair is just like completely unruly, and I'm going to try to be better about like not waiting to get a haircut. Um, but I have some haircut trauma. I can't help it. I had an experience with a hair cutter in the past who almost cut off my ear and so it's just been hard for me to go. Even still I get anxious going, I'm not even gonna lie. I also really desperately need to start doing some spring cleaning, like it needs to happen. I don't know if that's on the agenda today, but it's definitely happening soon. I've reached 280 pages in Pachinko and I'm really enjoying it. I will say though, even though I'm enjoying it, I can tell why somebody might have DNF'd this book. As I've been reading this book, I've been trying to pinpoint why Jack might have DNF'd this book. I have two theories so far. One of my theories is that this book is just a big commitment and this is no shade to Jack but I feel like Jack tends to read like bite-sized novels novels that you can easily whack out in a day and this is definitely not a book that you can whack out in a day so I almost wonder if the length itself was intimidating another one of my theories that I have so far is that this book in particular is just very dense in terms of the topics that it's covering you learn so much about the colonization of Korea in this book and what that looked like at the time and how it affected the people and I could see that being a reason somebody would want to DNA this book not because they don't want to like learn about something in history but because it is like overwhelming it's a lot to take in and in some cases when it comes to that aspect of it it almost feels a little bit on the info dumpy side it's dropping a lot of information on you but a lot of the information is just in order to like help shape things out and give you better context and I feel like the things that occur almost affect you even more because of that backdrop and because you know so much information but I can also see that being something that just like does not work for people because it is a lot. It is drowning in info dumps. And there are parts of the colonization in and of itself that are just like very draining to learn about. Like it's just really sad. So those are my theories currently. I'm eager to see why he DNF'd this book just because I myself am really liking it. So I'm wondering if like the things that I'm liking about it he might not have liked about it. I think my favorite part of this book is just following this family and the ways that they are facing the struggles that come their way because they are facing struggle after struggle and I'm just really enjoying seeing how they're working their way through troubled waters and we see the perspective of the adult characters but then there's also a child character that's dealing with everything and I just think that like that dynamic is really interesting as well. I'm looking forward to keep moving my way through this, and with my next update, I should have this book finished. Today is a day where I have to mow the lawn. Like, it has to happen. It's gotten to a point where it's like, I really need to take care of my lawn. I just freaking hate mowing the lawn. It is my least favorite activity ever. It takes forever, and I get all sweaty and gross, and I just, 
Ah, I hate it. It's a full-on vibe killer, but before I get to that, I'm gonna run some errands. I did a bit of spring cleaning because I've just been meaning to just like collect some items that I don't have any need for and get rid of them. So I'm gonna take some things to my local thrift store. I've been really trying to work on my hoarder ways. Not that I would like necessarily call myself like a full-on hoarder, but I do keep things that I don't need. And they're things that do not serve much of a purpose in my life. So I've just been like trying my best to rid my environment of things that I don't need. Then I'm definitely gonna go to an antique store and just do some browsing. I'm not looking to buy anything. I just like love going to antique stores and just like looking at all the things. Like it just brings me joy. Even though I am trying to rid my life of things, I like walking around and looking at things. Then I've been really craving tomato soup, but specifically tomato soup from Aldi's. They have this tomato soup that is just <sighs> Ooh, it hits the spot. It's so good. It's very, very sweet. So it's not one that I want to like highly recommend to people. I think if you're somebody that does not like super sweet tomato soup, you're not going to like it, but like it's so good. Then I will come back home and force myself to face the lawn. I really don't want to face the lawn today. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. I need to do it because otherwise it's going to be really hard to mow down the line. So I'm going to do it. After I deal with that, I will keep trekking along with Pachinko. <laughs> on my lawn mowing debacle. I did in fact not get to mow my lawn, which is a double-edged sword because obviously I needed to mow the lawn, but I also hate mowing the lawn. My lawn mower bit the dust. Live, laugh, love, adulting. Not. So anyway, that's the update on the lawn. I know that you guys wanted that update, but the update that you're really here for, I finished Pachinko and I have a lot of thoughts about this book, both good and bad. Like I feel like I really enjoyed this book, but there were also elements that I didn't enjoy. But here's the thing, the parts of it that like I didn't necessarily enjoy are parts of it that I also enjoyed. And I'll get into that. What I mean by that is that the historical bits were really interesting. And I feel like this book does a really good job of just like giving you all the information you need to know on the conflicts between Korea and Japan and that element of it I really enjoyed but at the same time I felt like the historical bits also in some ways like held the book back caused it to drag a bit and just at times made this book feel like a chore to get through. It sort of overloads you with information and it's not easy information to take in necessarily like it's not like happy-go-lucky fun information like it's like devastating times. If you know nothing about the conflict between Korea and Japan this book opens up the floodgates on all the information that you need to know in a somewhat accessible way, I will say it is overwhelming. Like it's not easy to take in, but I think it is something that is important and that you should learn about whether it be through this book or just by google.com. But it was one of those situations where it's so conflicting because there were times when it was like really positive and I was really glad to like be learning all this information. And then there were times where I was like, this feels like it's so much work to get through. <laughs> Having that as the backdrop to this story following a very complex family in terms of its origins and the secrets that they hold really pushes this book to explore really complex emotions, really complex topics, and just shapes out this book in a way where it feels very real. Like the family that we explore in this book, they just feel like a real family. Like I'm leaving it being like, did I just read a biography on a real family? Like that's how I feel. I loved seeing the evolution of this family, even if it was hard to swallow at times. All that being said though, I can see why this is a book that somebody might DNF. I feel like you have to be in a really specific mindset when you read it and you have to go into it like knowing what you're about to inhale. Like I would not want to go into this book not knowing 
knowing kind of what to expect. Overall, I think I would give this book like a solid four out of five star rating. Like I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed my time reading it. It did take me a lot longer than I was expecting it to, but I also just enjoyed the process of reading it. It's one of those books where when I finished it, I felt like fulfilled. I felt very satisfied. My one theory as to why Jack DNF this book remains the same as what I mentioned before. I do think that Jack like favors short books and that's not me being like shady and saying that there is nothing wrong with enjoying a shorter book. This one is not only large in length, like it's 531 pages. It feels so much longer when you're in the thick of it. I do genuinely feel like this is a book that Jack would enjoy though, like thinking about the books that he's read. Obviously I don't have like a catalog of every book that Jack has read in my head, but like I feel like the style of book that he likes, I feel like he would enjoy this, but I think it would be overwhelming to somebody who favors short books. So I'm really interested to see what his reasoning is as to why he DNF this book. I'm gonna watch his video and see if I'm correct about his reasoning. I'll report back. I'm back. In Jack's exact words, I literally wrote this down, this book was just too long for me. Boom. I'm pretty much winning the game, you guys. As if this video concept is a game, but if it were a game, I'd be winning. He also said though that he was reading it during a chaotic time in his life and it was like hard to focus, which I totally understand. I feel like I've DNF'd books with that same reasoning before and he felt like Pachinko deserved his full attention. So like mad respect for that. He also said though in the video, which this came out in 2022, he said that he was planning to read it in January. I assume January of 2023. So I'm actually going to look up on his Goodreads potentially and see if he ended up finishing reading it. Okay, it brought up his like status update and his last status update was January 4th, 2023 and he was 83% done with it. And that was the last status update that I see. Like I don't see a review or anything. So I don't know if that means he DNF'd it, but like his last status update was, oh no, why did this book stop being good in the final third? <laughs> so it seems he did try to read it again and it did not work for him, which again is understandable. I will say that like the buildup to the last bit of the book is a bit much. So I could see why it would deter somebody, but I still think it was worth it. I still enjoyed my time with it. Honestly, I'm kind of glad Jack DNF'd it because like it pushed me to read the book. <laughs> Doing this video concept like pushed me to finally read Pachinko and I'm very happy about it because I ended up enjoying it. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys have read Pachinko and what your thoughts are on it. On to the next booktuber. Okay, the next booktuber that was recommended to me after I posted that DNF video is This Story Ain't Over. I've been familiar with their channel for a while, and I believe we met briefly at Book Expo or BookCon, back when Book Expo and BookCon were still a thing, RIP to both of those things. I'm gonna be pulling a book from their The Worst Books I Read in 2023, plus all the books I DNF'd video. I'm gonna have to like listen a little bit to find the DNF section, but I'm gonna try my best to make sure that I don't hear their reasoning as to why they DNF'd this specific book. I'm hoping to find something in their list that I already own. If not, I will utilize the library. I'm gonna scan through their video and report back. Okay, I am once again shocked. It is a book that I own. It's also a book that I've been highly anticipating and I've been putting off. So I am low-key excited by the fact that like she has it on her list, but also like it makes me a little bit nervous now. It makes me nervous that it is on her list. I feel like now I'm going to be going into this book a little bit on the skeptical side of things. But this is a sequel to a book that I really enjoyed. The first book is Legendborn and the second book is Bloodmarked. She had Bloodmarked on her list of dnf books. And I'm just so curious, but also so nervous, so nervous. I really, really loved Legendborn. I thought that it was a fantastic intro into a new fantasy series. In Legendborn, we have Brie, our main character, who is kind of facing the grief of losing her mother. And one night she witnesses this magical attack and obviously that changes her life forever. This leads her to a secret society of people that call themselves Legendborn. That's obviously the initial kickoff of the story. There's so much more that happens. I think Bloodmarked came out last year, if I remember correctly. And of course I wanted to read it right away, but did I read it right away? No, I did not. On one hand, I'm excited to have have the push to read it, but now I'm nervous going into this book. <laughs> Truth be told, I don't know if Jenny and I have the same taste when it comes to books. I don't really know if we match up that well, but we'll see. I am very eager to get into this and see how I feel about it now. So I'll keep you guys updated along the way. My plans for the day are obviously to start this at some point. I'm also going to see a movie tonight. I'm seeing a horror movie in theaters. It's called Immaculate. I don't remember the last time I saw a horror movie in theaters. So I'm really interested to see what that experience is gonna be like. I feel like horror movies in theaters are a lot of fun because you just get like everybody's reactions and everybody screams and it just feels like a group effort like you are in it together you are going through it together and I'm really looking forward to that so that's the plan for today let's get to it
<laughs> I'm about halfway through the book. I'm on page 294. I had a rough night's sleep the other night and I ended up just getting up and just powering through more of this book. This has been a rush. I feel like the author is just like unloading a truckload of like politics, action, and chaos. Just dumping it all on the reader. Me being the reader in question. It's been quite a bit of a thrill for me so far. Like I've been really enjoying the process of reading this book. I'm not gonna sit here and say that it's perfect yet because like there are a few elements that I'm not so sure how I feel about. I will say it's not like as enchanting as the first book, but I also didn't expect that going into this book because I feel like the second book can never have that same quality. I feel like the first book you're being introduced to the world, you're being introduced to the characters, and you're kind of setting the stepping stones for what's to come later on. And that feeling will almost never be replicated in the rest of the series. Like that's what the opening book is for. But so far so good. I'm going into the second half cautiously optimistic. Why I think somebody could DNF this book or would DNF this book is because there are a lot of things that are being brought up in this book that are a bit hard to swallow. But I love when a fantasy book does that. I love when a fantasy book takes real world things, which I feel like fantasy does this often. I feel like I'm saying it like, a fantasy never talks about things that we face in the real world, but I feel like fantasy often does that. Um, but I just like the way that this author is approaching those topics and those things and the way that they are exploring them. I feel like I'm trying to be very vague in talking about this because obviously this is a sequel. I don't want to like ruin anything for anybody who hasn't read this book yet. But with that being said, I feel like that is a reason as to why somebody might DNF this book. It's not necessarily like a happy-go-lucky fun time. Like there are serious things being explored throughout this book. And like if you're somebody who is just like not in a mindset where you can like take that on, I feel like that could be a reason why somebody might DNF this book. That's my only theory so far. I can't think of anything else that would like have me DNFing this book. It could be a situation where it just like comes down to pressure. Reference. Like maybe she just wasn't enjoying this book as much as she enjoyed the first book. I don't know. I don't know the situation. I'm still trying to figure that out. I'll let you guys know if I come up with any more theories. I saw Immaculate the other night. It's a horror movie. I truthfully did not know what I was getting myself into. I didn't watch any trailers or anything. I just knew that it involved nuns and Sydney Sweeney. That's all I knew going into this movie. And I wasn't necessarily like scared while watching the movie. Like there was never a moment where I was like terrified, but it's just like such a tense story. Like it just was so tense. Like the whole time, I just felt like I was on the edge of my seat. Again, not scared. I just, there were just so many like intense things happening and it just like, <sighs> It was not an enjoyable movie watching experience. Like I'm glad that I saw it, but it's one of those situations where I feel like I will never watch this movie ever again. Like it's a one time thing for me. I would not enjoy watching it again. There's a specific scene with fingernails that like is ingrained in my head. Ingrained and it's like, oh. I just can't do it. It's too much. It's too much. I went to the library earlier and checked out a few things. I guess I could show you guys what I checked out. Let me go get my stack. I forgot that one of the books that I got from the library is a little bit embarrassing. I just need to own it. It's a Minecraft Let's Build book. I've been getting back into Minecraft lately and honestly, it brings on the cozy vibes. I cannot even be mad at it. I got this book called Game On. This is a gamer romance book and it's by the author of The Love Con, which is a book that I read and loved. It's one of my favorite romance books. I got this Twisted Wonderland manga. I've been really intrigued by the Twisted Wonderland series by Disney. I had to get on a wait list for this one and it finally came through. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. I don't know. I feel like this is just gonna be like a silly goofy fun time, but I love a silly goofy fun time as we know. Then I rechecked out this book called Beloved Beast. I recently started a nonfiction reading vlog and this is the first book that I'm reading for that vlog, but I've been kind of like slacking when it comes to actually taking the time out to read nonfiction books. So I'm gonna work on that vlog hopefully soon. I'll update you guys on my final thoughts on Bloodmarked after I finish it.
I have finished Bloodmarked. I also did not ever get the actual cover out of the tub. I was gonna try to find the cover and get it out of the tub and put the cover on so that I could just like have a visual throughout the video, but like I have no visual. I apologize for that. Initially when I started reading this book, I was really enjoying it. Like I was having a good time. I still by the end of it thought that it was like a fun read and I think it's like a fun installment to the story, but I do have some issues with it coming out of it and I just don't think it lived up to the first book for me. Like, I still enjoyed it. There were definitely, like, character elements, character things that were happening that I really enjoyed. Mostly with the side characters, I must admit. Like, I feel like throughout this book, the side characters completely overshadow Brie. I don't know what was going on with Brie, but, like, something fell off. Something felt not the same with Brie. I ended up caring way more about the side characters and what they were up to compared to what Brie was up to, and that was just like really an interesting experience for me because I loved Brie in the first book. Like in the first book she was my it girl, but in this book I much more cared about the side characters. It just felt like something was off with her. She didn't feel the same to me, I guess. Like there was just something personality-wise and also choices. Some of the choices that she was making, I was like, girl, what is going on here. The Brie in book one would not be making these choices. Something that I mentioned when I read the first section of this book is that I really liked the pacing, I really liked all the things that were happening, like it felt like there was so much happening, but like the deeper I got in, I was like, okay, there is a lot of things happening, but are these things that are happening purposeful? Do they have purpose within the story? And like, yes, there were things that obviously were like pushing the plot forward and like getting us somewhere, but then there were things that like weren't really developing the plot that much, so I just feel, ah, I have iffy feelings. I have such mixed feelings about this book. It definitely started to fall into second book slump for me, which was my fear. I still really enjoyed it. Again, like I had a fun time with it. I'm not leaving it being like, ah, oh, this was the worst sequel ever, but it wasn't the best sequel ever either. <laughs> also, I know that this is a YA book. I know it's young adult, but it implemented like very YA cliche-y things, and that really bothered me about it. Because I feel like the first book, like while it did like have moments where it felt young adult, it felt like it was supposed to be a part of that category. I also felt like it was doing a lot of like new and fresh things, and this one just like started to bring in some cliche elements that I did not enjoy. It definitely shifts its focus in terms of what it develops in here and I really appreciated that aspect of it. And again, I really loved the side characters. Like those two elements for me, I think were enough. Like they were enough to have this be an enjoyable reading experience. But I ended up landing on a three star rating with this book. I do have some theories as to why Jinani might have DNF'd this book. And I feel like a lot of them are just like my grievances with this book. But one that comes to mind is kind of the expectations because you leave book one and book one is just so fantastic that this book has a lot to live up to. So maybe she really loved the first book and then started to read this one and it just like wasn't hitting in the way that the first book was hitting. That's the main theory that I have. I also know that I mentioned another theory. I should have written it down. I'm now gonna go watch her video, find out why she DNF'd it, and come back and discuss. And we're back. I feel like I was a little bit right. There was one element that I wasn't able to guess, but that's because it was like a personal situation. She said that she started reading it when she wasn't in the right headspace for it, which I can totally understand. I feel like there's been several times when I've just had to DNF a book just because like I wasn't ready to take it in or like I had something going on that was like really stressful and the book that I was reading was stressing me out even more. So I can understand that situation for sure. She also said that she felt like it was overcomplicating things that were brought up in the first book, which I can kind of understand that. I feel like there were definitely elements that could have easily been simplified. Then she felt like it was kind of slow in expanding the world. I feel like I had a bit of a different experience with this book because it felt like so fast paced and rapid for me. So I didn't really feel that same way, but I can understand that perspective. And then she said she didn't feel like this book had the same spark as the first book, which is basically what my theory was. So I'm right. I got it. Okay. I guessed right. Except there were other reasons that I obviously could not pick up on. So I am low key glad that Janine had this on her list because it pushed me to finally pick it up and read it. I'm glad that I read it. Was it my favorite sequel ever? No. Am I still excited for the third book? Yes. I will be seated. I will be ready for the third and final book in this trilogy. Now it's time to pick out the next booktuber and the next read. The last booktuber for this video is Books with Emily Fox. I'm going to be pulling a book from her video titled All the Books I Didn't Finish and Won't in 2020. 
2023. I feel like Emily and I might not necessarily have like similar taste, but I will say I think that we are both like very particular on what we do and do not like. So I'm very interested to see how I end up feeling about the book that I choose from her video. I'm gonna scan through her video and pick out a book, hoping that there's something in there that I already own. So I will let you guys know what book I end up picking out from her video. All right, I was able to find a book from her video that I do in fact already own. This is a book that I have been wanting to read for a long time now, so I am excited to get around to it, but obviously the circumstances surrounding this book and me reading it aren't ideal. It would be more ideal if it was on a list that she made that was like the best books ever that changed my life forever. The book that I chose from her video is Wayward. In this book we are following three different stories from three different timelines and I believe of course they all somehow connect in some kind of way. First up we've got 2019 where we are following Kate who has just fleed from an abusive relationship and ends up at her great aunt's cottage. As she begins to live her life in this cottage she sees signs that lead her to believe that her great aunt had been hiding secrets. Then we have 1619 where we are following a girl named Alpha. Is that what it is? Alpha. This is a time where people involved in witchcraft were hunted, and now Alpha is being sought out for being involved in witchcraft. And then we follow Violet, who is living in 1942 during World War II. I do love, like, a weaving storyline situation, and I feel like that's going to be involved in this book. Truth be told, I thought that this was going to be more of a cozy fantasy situation, but I feel like that's not going to be the case. Not going to be the case at all. But I'm very excited to see how I end up feeling about it. Let's get started. It's time for reading. to Wayward. What page am I at actually? I'm on page 175. I'm enjoying it so far, but it's not exactly what I was expecting it to be. It's a lot darker than I was expecting, I'll say that. It deals with a lot of like really heavy things. Obviously, I knew going into it that I was going to have like a toxic, abusive relationship, so I was prepared for that, but there's so many other elements that come through with that, and I also just like wasn't expecting the abuse to like be such a big thing throughout this book, but it seems that like it is such a big thing throughout this book. Like, it's not only one character dealing with abuse, there's rape woven in, there's also suicide ideation, there's gaslighting, there's manipulation, there's just a lot of heavy things happening in this story. And it's not things that are like going unacknowledged, like, it's not problematic the way that they're woven in, obviously. It's more so exploring those things, but I just like was not expecting that to be the case going into this book. But it's been it's been very heavy. Um, I was expecting it to be a little bit stronger in terms of like atmosphere. Honestly, going into this book, I thought that I was going to get like a book filled with witches. Like, I thought it was gonna, like, just deliver the witchy vibes, and there obviously is, like, a witch element woven into the story, and I think that, like, this second half, I'm probably going to see that more kind of take over, which is something that I'm really excited for, but I just was expecting much more of a fantastical story. But meeting this book where it's at, I am enjoying it. I do like the topics that it's exploring. Violet is the one that I went into this book knowing the least amount of information about, and as I'm, like, uncovering her story, I am the most sold on her story. Like, she is my favorite perspective to read from, and I feel like it's because she has the most mystery. There's, like, a big mystery behind her mom, and her dad is, like, very controlling, and so we're just kind of, like, trying to put together the pieces and figuring out why the situation is the way that it is, and I just really, really love 
her perspective the most. Like every time she pops up, I'm like, wow, this is so good. Um, but again, that's not what I was expecting to happen going into this book. So I'm loving that like unexpected element. I think the main reason that I can think of right now for why somebody might DNF this book is because of how heavy it is. Like the entirety of what I've read has been heavy. So I can imagine that just being a lot for somebody, especially if they're not prepared for that going into this book. And it's very detailed. It's not like it just like shies away from going there. Like it delves deep into these topics and explores them, which is just a lot. It's a lot to swallow. And I can see that being a reason why somebody is just like, I just can't do this. I can't read this book. I also feel like it's not the most compelling book, truth be told. And I can see that being a reason why somebody might put this book down as well. Somebody might DNF this book because like not every storyline is necessarily compelling or they might find one character more interesting than the other. And to have to like wade through other perspectives is never really that enjoyable. Like who wants to do that? Nobody. Nobody at all. I'm definitely planning on finishing off this book this evening, so I'll share my thoughts with you in the morning. Okay, after I let go of my initial expectations for this book, I really started to enjoy it a lot more. I would say that the beginning of the book is not the best. It really takes its time to get good. And I would also say that, like, I only really was hooked on one perspective towards the beginning, and it took some time for me to like really attach myself to the other characters and to kind of like really get into their stories. But once I did, like I really started to enjoy what this book was doing. I feel like this book is really about how we fail women time and time again. And it's also about like taking back your power. You might have gone through these like really, really hard times, but it's about like doing what you can to overcome those things and find it within yourself to keep fighting and eventually finding yourself in a much better spot than where you were. I loved where the story ended up. I loved seeing all the storylines come together. By no means is this a perfect book, but it is one of those books that I'm glad I stuck through till the end because I feel like the turnaround for me was worth it. My theories as to why somebody might DNF this book or why Emily might have DNF this book, one is that it does deal with like a lot of heavy content. There are tons of trigger warnings to be shared with this book, ones that come to mind, sexual assault, rape, suicide ideation, abuse, so there's lots of trigger warnings going into this book, and just knowing that alone, you know it's gonna be a heavy one. And then also my other theory is again just like not enjoying all the perspectives, like maybe only having one perspective that you really connected with, sometimes that can be enough to have you just being like, nope, I'm not gonna do it, I'm dropping the book. I'm now gonna watch Emily's video and finally find out why she DNF this book and just come back and compare our thoughts. All right, I watched her video and here is what she had to say. First up, she only made it 18% of the way through the book, which I can understand why like she maybe not have been able to like make it farther in. Like I said, it isn't like the most compelling book. Like it's not necessarily one that like hooks you right from the start. And it took a while for me to really find myself invested in the story. And I also like, had a hard time with the perspectives. Like not every perspective was interesting to me. In fact, there was only like one really interesting perspective and the other perspectives got more interesting later on in the story. So it did take some time to like hook its claws into me, but because she only made it like 18% of the way through the book, she doesn't have many thoughts for me to go off of, which is fine. She did mention the fact that people told her that this book had problematic content within it, which if you consider like depictions of certain things problematic, I can understand that. But like the things that are woven into this story are not like glorified, like the rape and abuse and all the things that happen are not like romanticized by any means. In fact, it's much more about these characters like taking back their power and honestly like karma, like letting karma do its thing to these people that have hurt them in some kind of way. Unless I like missed something rather problematic, which if you guys have read this book and you feel like it was problematic, definitely let me know down below in the comments because obviously I wanna be educated. I don't wanna just be like, this book is not problematic when there might be problematic content. I just didn't pick up on it. I'm open to hearing your thoughts, your perspectives, but I didn't pick up on anything problematic unless we're talking about just like the depictions of the abuse that was happening in here. Then like I can understand that. I feel like if it was problematic, it would be glorified and romanticized, but like it wasn't. It was very much so being like, this is not okay and we're gonna do something about the fact that it's not okay. That's all I really had to go off of in terms of Emily's thoughts, but I will say that like, I do understand why somebody would DNF this book. We have reached the end of this video. We have reached the end of this reading experiment. I really enjoyed this process and it was really nice to read some of these books that I've been meaning to read for the longest time. So I'm glad that these booktubers like pushed me to read these books, even though the circumstances were a little bit questionable reading their DNFs. I was afraid 
afraid that I was gonna have me DNFing these books, but thankfully I was able to get through each and every one of them. And I did overall enjoy them. I feel like Wayward was my favorite. Then Pachinko, I think. I think Pachinko would come next. And then Bloodmarked. That's how I would tier rank them in my head. Let me know down below in the comments if any of you guys have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. I wanna hear from you guys down below in the comments. If you have not read these books, then just let me know down below in the comments the last book that you DNF'd. And maybe I'll do a video where I read your DNFs. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! -o.